Okay, we discussed in the previous lecture the fuel cell and the typical fuel cell use hydrogen as fuel, but we can also have another type of fuel cell using alcohol as a fuel, a methanol. And uh, <coughs> this is uh, interesting because uh, alcohol methanol is a liquid, so if we are thinking to use a fuel cell in a car, now to refill uh, the car we can use a liquid, same way used now with gasoline. So this could be some interesting expert. And there is not very much difference in terms of cell structure in the, in the sense that even uh, direct alcohol fuel cell or the methanol fuel cell use the same polymer membrane that we have discussed previously. Uh, the catalyst change a little, bit, a little bit and pass from platinum to platinum ruthenium. Okay, this is the how uh, a fuel cell, direct methanol fuel cell works. You have seen, you see here the <clears throat> here is the fuel coming here and um, it is uh, reduced, uh, maybe I have, I have a better, yeah, this is better. The, f the fuel is coming here as uh, mixtures of maybe, maybe uh, methanol or ethanol and water, and this is the reaction which takes place here. You see we have oxidation with the formation of CO2 and uh, protons. The protons go through the membranes because we know that this membrane is permeable to, to protons, and here oxygen comes, and this is exactly the same reaction that we had with the other, <coughs> with the other uh, uh, fuel cell. Um, you see that then the main reaction is uh, uh, reaction with methanol with oxygen to form water and CO2. Now, <coughs> this is good in a way because uh, methanol is available and is a liquid, but it's bad because we are producing CO2. So this is not something that we like. And uh, maybe we go back here. And uh, you see now this is a typical structure. This is maybe <coughs> represented a little, bit, a little bit better. Here is the EMEA. So this is S in the sa same way as we saw with the previous fuel cell. We need to have a gas diffusion layer where the liquid can pass through. It's about uh, 100, 300 micrometers. So this one, you see, is the mixtures of carbon and uh, catalyst, and the same thing happens here. Uh, <coughs> and you see that to the membrane we have passage of, 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 of a proton, which is good, but also passage of water and methanol, which is not good. We'll discuss that later. <coughs> the type of uh, uh, catalyst is a bit different. You remember that for uh, uh, oxidation of hydrogen, <coughs> we need just platinum. Here instead, we need uh, a combination of platinum and ruthenium because the first uh, process is uh, <coughs> the formation of this complex, platinum complex, okay? And uh, <coughs> then uh, <coughs> we need ruthenium which reacts with water to form this ruthenium hydroxide because only this ruthenium hydroxide can combine with this one and give them <coughs> the desired uh, products. So in this case, the, in this case, the, uh, the catalyst is a bifunctional mechanism. One function is, is, provided by, is provided by platinum, the other function is provided by ruthenium. So you need to have both of them together, otherwise the cell does not work. And uh, it is very delicate, the preparation of this catalyst, because you must have the right composition and the right morphology to be sure that this catalyst operates correctly. 
So you see here that uh, it is reported in this graph the, uh, <coughs> uh, the voltage and uh, the current density. So you understand that, uh, that, that <coughs> higher is the voltage that we need to have a reaction. Can I say? <laughs> if the voltage is very high, it's not good. You know, uh, in other words, we like to have the voltage as low as possible because all the excess of voltage that we require is called over voltage and is a loss of energy. So you see that uh, <coughs> we have, uh, among th these numbers represent the temperature at which the platinum ruthenium composition has been fired. So in other words, the, 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 the way of producing this catalyst is to take platinum oxide, ruthenium oxide, heat it up in oxygen in order to, uh, to heat it up in air, sorry, in order to produce the, the intermetallic. So you see the 60, a 6, when we do the 600 degrees, we have very large, fall, it's a long way up here before we get some current. And we get current only when the reaction proceeds, of course. It is a little bit better for the material fired at 500, a bit better with 430, but the best activity is for uh, the catalyst uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> fire 470. Of course, all these uh, <coughs> all these uh, experiments have been done in the same cell with the same amount of catalyst load. Of course, this 25 degrees indicates that this operation has been done, this test has been done at 25 degrees. And uh, this planation is, uh, is given by this X-ray uh, <coughs> uh, pattern. So the green one, remember, is the material fired at 600 degrees. And uh, I'm sure that all of you is an uh, expert of X-ray, more than me. And so you understand that here it's very crystalline phase. While uh, when we go down to 430, all, most of the crystalline peaks disappear. The peaks with increase, so we are going into a very, very amorphous phase. So for the previous uh, graph, you see that neither the very high crystalline nor the amorphous material operates well but only something in between, which is this 470. I don't know what that is. Is that Korean? This, no? Huh? Came out from my computer, I don't know. I have a bug. Well, anyhow, so this is the, be the reason for that is not really clear, but obviously the activity of the, of the <coughs> catalyst depends on the morphology. Now, this is a typical characterization curve of a fuel cell. Remember, the characterization curve, are, the characterization curve is the, the behavior of a voltage versus current density. And as all the situation seen before, we will see that when we pass current, the potential goes down due to some over, over voltage, and then goes <coughs> practically to zero. And if we, if we multiply the current versus the voltage, we have this curve, which is uh, power. So for this cell, the maximum power is about uh, 500 milliampere hour square centimeter. And you see that uh, here again, we have, uh, we have an indication of all these losses. So <laughs> at the beginning, we have, uh, uh, OK, this is, uh, this is the curve of the cell. And this is the curve, the voltage curve, only the anode. This is only the cathode. And you see that we have all this gray part here, this voltage, which affects the battery. And is is due to kinetic loss, namely, is due to the <coughs> to the <coughs> to the change to the to the point where we have 
electrons go into the into the product this part here so the catalyst uh, <coughs> behavior then uh, we have uh, this uh, red one here and here which is the the <coughs> resistance of the electrolyte so the resistance of the, of the <coughs> proton to pass through this membrane which of course is the same for both anode and cathode more or less and this one <coughs> will be <coughs> uh, well actually this the resistance of the lateral is red for the for the anode and green for the cathode this is interesting because it seems that the, we have higher resistance at the cathode than at the anode in practically we will have that this seems from that graph that proton can move rather well up here but then they have some difficulties here okay and this one will be the mass transport so this is the limiting current so the maximum current that we can drive out from a fuel cell of course the larger is the co this current is, is the better but uh, <coughs> to have a large current we have to improve very well the all the <coughs> all the battery construction the, but, excuse me the fuel cell construction okay <coughs> because that, that current is related to the number of, of protons that can go through here and uh, participate in the reaction The major issue of this uh, kind of fuel cell is that <coughs> is that methanol instead of uh, remaining here and being oxidized it can travel through the the membrane so this is called methanol crossover it is not very good because if a methanol goes arrive to this side it may react with oxygen and uh, produce some water so <coughs> if methanol you understand that if methanol instead of being all oxidized here is going part and through here we lose in current because uh, we should have uh, <coughs> this reaction here but some if some of this goes through the here then of course we we'll, we we'll lose some material for the for the fuel cell and so we have a we have an, a, <coughs> a loss of uh, of uh, properties and there's not very much to do here maybe one possibility is to to make this a bit thicker but if we make the membrane thicker we increase the resistance of the member of the cell of the fuel cell or we can disperse in, into this uh, <coughs> membrane some uh, particles maybe some uh, ceramic particles so if the particles are here they may prevent methanol to go through there but this is still a very a very important open question because you see <coughs> what we left here that we we, we <coughs> have this methanol crossover we will have, as I say, metal oxidation here instead of having only metal reduction. So we will have uh, a mixed potential. So we will have a decrease in voltage and voltage efficiency loss. <coughs> and uh, it's more or less uh, <coughs> as before. So <coughs> we can just, how can we? determine whether we have uh, a crossover methanol in uh, direct methanol fuel cell well 